Well, thanks, Terry. Good morning, everybody. Oh, seems a bit loud. Okay, um, do we have um, my slides up? I, I can just click you through. Okay. There we go. So I was asked to provide an overview of um, CSER and um, give you a, a sense of the participants and the projects that are involved, um, really to set the stage for what I know is a, a, an effort to try to um, enhance collaboration between our two groups. So in a nutshell, uh, CSER or CSER II, um, this is the second iteration, is intended to um, look at the effectiveness of the integration of genome sequencing into clinical care and particularly emphasizing diverse and medically underserved populations or individuals. Um, CSER I, which I was not directly involved in, generated um, evidence on the um, efficacy of clinical sequencing and some tools, computational tools and educational tools. Uh, the focus in this um, second iteration is on really bringing this to a diverse uh, population. Um, won't go into detail on this slide um, about the participating sites, um, but we're um, not exactly evenly spread over the country. I, no, I guess I noticed that just looking at the map here, uh, but a concentration um, on the coasts and um, down into Texas, as you can see. Well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, you're a coast. Okay. I'll, I'll resist the temptation to say what's in my mind right now. <laughs> Okay, um, here is a um, quick overview of the structure of CSER. There is an advisory panel who are present here today and um, have been uh, meeting with us and, and also independently uh, to provide sort of oversight and advice. Uh, the coordinating center is at University of Washington, uh, run by Gail Jarvik and, and her colleagues there. I'll introduce the sites in detail in just a moment. You may not be able to read them well. Here, uh, there's certainly been active involvement um, from NIH, and then I don't know how well it's readable, but there are a set of working groups um, that meet actively and have been um, spawning various projects that are specific to their group. Um, if I can read them, which I'm not totally sure I can from here, um, this clinical utility, health economics and policy, education and return of results, LC and diversity patient community and clinical stakeholder engagement, survey measures and outcomes, and sequence analysis and diagnostic yield. So here are the participating sites, and I'll say just a word or two about the areas of focus, um, and I think this is in roughly alphabetical order. Um, so Baylor College of Medicine, um, I guess everybody is, is working to find the, the best acronyms for their projects. This one is. Kids Can Seek, and it focuses on children with cancer. Uh, Hudson Alpha, which is a collaboration with UAB, which is where I got involved, is South Seek, and uh, our focus is on newborns with suspected genetic conditions. Uh, Mount Sinai is um, New York City Kids Seek, and uh, the focus there is on children with suspected um, cardiac, neurologic, and immunologic genetic conditions. Kaiser Permanente is CHARM, and there the focus is adults who are at risk of hereditary cancer. Um, the NIH, uh, NHGRI intramural program um, is represented in the form of ClinSeq A2, uh, where the focus is adults not selected for any particular phenotype, I think, with a very heavy emphasis on enrollment of African Americans, and that enrollment is completed, as you'll see in just a moment. Uh, UNC in Chapel Hill is NC Genes 2. The focus is children with suspected genetic conditions, and UCSF is PEGS, and they're, uh, they're looking at infants and children uh, with severe developmental disorders. So it's early days in enrollment, and you'll see in a moment a little bit of a breakdown of that. This is projected enrollment that would peak at about 7,000 over the course of the study. The line at the very bottom that appears flat is the ClinSeq, as I mentioned, their enrollment is completed. <laughs> Here's a breakdown in terms of <laughs> ethnicity and gives you a sense of about where we are in terms of enrollment to date. I think we have work to do uh, to achieve our goals of um, diversity, which really is a central goal, as I mentioned. Um, but um, all of the sites are very heavily engaged in um, community outreach and engagement 
uh, with the hope that that will be um, a way of, of bringing this um, project to diverse communities. I think one of the main areas of focus in the course of the past months has been on data harmonization. Um, the various sites are collecting a diverse set of data aside from the, the genomic data. Um, baseline measures include things like demographics. Um, there are uh, various surveys of um, individuals um, post return of results. There are surveys of decliners and one of the challenges was that each of the sites had to customize their approach to data collection, obviously according to the goals of their study, but it had the potential of generating a kind of Tower of Babel of um, various approaches to these measurements. So a lot of effort has gone into harmonization of these data sets over the course of um, this past year or so. And I think we've come a long way and one of the active discussions now is how to actually merge these data sets so as to make them available um, to researchers to look across the various studies. Uh, at the previous face-to-face -face meeting, which was in September, we had, I think most would agree, a really inspiring stakeholder engagement meeting that occurred in parallel with presentations and participation by various stakeholders and um, at least my sense, and I think it, it was widely shared, was that it, it really was sort of uh, motivational and inspirational and it's, I hope, something that we'll be able to continue into the future. There's been a fair amount of activity in terms of um, publicity in the form of um, papers. Uh, this is a paper that came out in this um, genetics journal. Um, I make the point that um, <coughs> whenever I'm involved in, in things like this, there's a, a mechanism of recusal, by the way, so um, there's no conflict there. But in any case, uh, there has been one paper. There's another um, that is currently in process. Uh, there was a lot of activity at the American Society of Human Genetics meeting. <coughs> and there are a set of surveys. This is a survey on um, genetics and, and, and ethnicity and ancestry uh, that is um, currently being circulated. So I'll conclude with um, just a, a set of um, both challenges that we have faced and some lessons learned or being learned. Um, this group has a lot of moving parts, uh, although we are dealing in the same human genome uh, that still leaves a lot of um, room for different approaches and just getting everything organized and harmonized and um, logistically arranged is a non-trivial process, but I think the coordinating center has done an outstanding job in helping to make that happen. Our biggest goal is obviously engaging communities who might historically not have been included in research of this kind and uh, this remains an area of um, significant challenge but also significant opportunity and I think it will be one of the great products of um, CSER that um, we will, I hope, have learned things about how to engage diverse populations. Obviously the sequencing and variant interpretation, which I would expect is a common challenge that we all face, um, continues um, to be um, an area of significant focus in terms of uh, agreeing on uh, what we are willing to return, what the criteria um, for pathogenicity are, and in spite of um, pretty tight criteria, there, there's still plenty of um, room for different points of view on that. And finally, one of the areas that we're very focused on right now and was a, a big discussion at this meeting concerns data sharing, and I don't mean so much the genomic data sharing. That's challenging enough, but it is something for which um, there are tools available. It's actually more the other kinds of data sets that we're generating, which are not necessarily only genomic and where each site has developed its own approaches to collecting those data. We have, as I mentioned, done a lot to try to harmonize the data sets, uh, but we haven't yet faced the, the larger challenge of actually merging them into a kind of a sandbox uh, where people will have access and be able to use that for research. And so that's a continued area of active discussion. And I think I will now turn it over to Rex and, and let Rex talk about Emerge. 